Whether you're building a brand new guitar rig or you're simplifying an overly complicated one, it can be an overwhelming task digging through and trying to find out what are the essential pieces. On today's episode, I'm gonna share with you the building blocks of a well-rounded guitar rig. The first and most important building blocks of a great electric guitar rig are the electric guitar and the amplifier. You'd be hard pressed to find any other guitar on the face of the earth more recorded and used than the Telecaster. When Leo Fender invented it in 1950, he had no idea, no clue that it would cover every genre from country to metal. Now, whether you choose this guitar or not, maybe it's not your thing. Just know that the most important aspect of picking out an electric guitar is that you're having fun playing it and it makes you wanna play more. I'm a big fan of Fender style amplifiers because they're loud, they're clean, and they love pedals. You usually get an onboard reverb and even a tremolo effect sometimes. And this is my old faithful blues deluxe. I've had this thing almost 20 years. I picked it up on the road in a pawn shop for a few hundred dollars. It's been on so many tours, countless recording sessions, and I've even used it to design a ton of the JHS pedals. I can't recommend it enough, and you can pick up a reissue of that for $800, and I think you'd be in love. Another option is a Vox style amplifier. It's British, it's a little grittier, it's got a little bit more bite to it, but it's an excellent option and a ton of fun. Those come in about $700. So now let's get to what really matters, guitar pedals. You're gonna need to start with a good overdrive. And the purpose of a good overdrive is to give you the sound of a crank tube amp without waking up your neighbors. And that's exactly why the Ibanez Tube Screamer was invented and why it's tried and true and used on so many pro players boards. This is fundamental guitar 101 and you gotta have it. You gotta have a good overdrive. Here's another option that I really enjoy even more than the TS9. It's the Boss SD1W. It's the classic SD1 Super Overdrive that's been around for a long time, but they've updated it and added a second mode. I really enjoy this pedal. It's a little more versatile than that other green box. And another overdrive option is the Blues Driver, the BD2W. This is also from the Wazacraft line and has a second mode. This pedal's cool because it covers really light breakup, light overdrive, all the way to a high gain overdrive, almost distortion. And speaking of distortion, you're gonna need one of those too. My favorite distortion pedal ever is the Proco Rat. It's classic and it does high gain distortion so well. It'll easily cross over into kind of a fuzz sound and you can clean it up and do some overdrive. You can't go wrong adding this to your rig. Next up is the ever so famous Boss DS1. You've all seen it. Everyone in your family knows what this is. You've seen it laying around in parks. You've seen it in your closet, shoe boxes, in the trunks of cars. It's all over the world because it's really good. They wouldn't sell that many if it wasn't. There's not a bad sound in it, unless you turn the treble all the way up. That's pretty bad, but nobody's got time for that. It's a good option. And you might want to leave the land of distortion and head to the land of fuzz. And I recommend the Big Muff. You know, fuzz is distortion. It's just a lot more gnarly, a lot more crazy, and a lot more fun in some cases. And this is an easy way to get in and an easy pedal to use. If you keep liking fuzz, you might want to check out my mini foot version two. It's simple, elegant, purple, small. That's enough. That's enough reasons. Just try it. thing your guitar rig is going to need is some space. We're not talking about like, give me some space so I can think about my feelings. We're talking about reverb. Reverb is a big deal. And the amps I told you about, they offer reverb, but these pedals help you go beyond that and give you a much more ambient texture. And that's really useful in almost every genre of music. I like this Holy Grail reverb. It's really classic and hard to beat. And this new Fender Marine Layer reverb has a ton of options. Can't go wrong with either one. Thank you. 
Another valuable way to add space to your guitar rig is through the use of an echo or delay pedal like these. The Boss DD7, because you can actually tap in a tempo to the beat and have the echoes and the repeats follow that tempo. And then you have something like the Electro Harmonics Canyon. This has all the classic delays that this has, but it also has some really fun stuff like shimmer that adds octave to the repeats and reverb all kinds of fun stuff, and it helps you get a little more creative. So delay is really important, and it's one of my favorite effects. Another really great effect that's used in almost any guitar rig is the effect called tremolo. Tremolo is basically the movement of your guitar's volume between quiet and loud in a rhythmic way. The Boss TR2 is classic, and I also make a little simple guy here called the Tidewater Trim. They both do the job really well, and it just comes down to green or blue. What's your favorite color? Yeah, because if you play your favorite color, it's gonna sound better. One type of effect that I have to have in any of my guitar rigs is the effect called modulation. Modulation is a broad category and it has within it a lot of different types of effects that you've definitely heard of. They all have one thing in common though. They modulate your signal. They cause some movement, a really beautiful texture underneath whatever your other effects are doing. And these are my absolutely favorite ways to modulate your guitar signal. The Blue Hippo by Way Huge and the Chorus CE2W by Boss. These are great examples of classic Bucket Brigade chorus. You've heard those tones on so many songs your entire life. Turn on the radio right now, you're probably gonna hear an analog chorus. Next up is Phaser. The Phase 90 is the most famous, and the Small Stone by Electro Harmonics is equally well known and in a lot of guitar rigs. Phaser's a little more swishy and swooshy, you might say. It's not so clean and precise. It has a bigger sound and a bigger feel, and for some applications, it's just better. Next is my favorite form of modulation, the Univibe. I like it because it lives between phaser and chorus. It's like the best of both worlds, and I usually put it on the vibrato setting. The Voodoo Lab Micro Vibe is a classic, and the new Good Vibes by Electro Harmonics is really good, and it has a lot of extra settings. And last but not least is the effect called Flanger. Flanger is a type of chorus and kind of a type of delay. It's hard to explain. You don't need to know all the details. Just know that this is cool. And if you turn the settings down, it'll pull off a chorus, but then you turn them up and it does the crazy flange sound. So you might kill two birds with one stone by adding a flanger, or you might not, but one of these modulation effects is a must for your rig. Now that I've shown you those essential pedals, I'm gonna show you a few bonus pedals. But before I show you the bonus pedals, just buy a tuner. Nobody wants to hear you if you're out of tune. It's just a fact, I promise. Now, back to those bonus pedals. Bonus pedals are here to make us have fun with the guitar. When you hold a guitar, when you play it, when you're hearing the music you create, it all has to come around to enjoying it. And it's through that enjoyment that we keep on going. So. These are for that purpose. Number one is the wah. Some might say it's essential. It's not for me, but I might get punched in the face by certain people for saying that, but I think you should try it. From Metallica to Shaft, there's a wah pedal in modern music. Now, the Micropog. It's an octave pedal. You can make your guitar have a bass guitar type element or a high pitched frequency octave above your normal guitar playing. So in other words, you can make your guitar sound a lot bigger than your normal guitar. And that's really cool, especially when you add distortion. A looper pedal, 
basically a small computer that when you hit it, it records what you're playing, you hit it again, it plays that and allows you to play over the top. So it's great for practicing, it's great for building some guitar part and then playing over it. And once again, it's making your guitar bigger than real life. Now, this is kind of a weird pedal made by a friend of mine. Uh, it's the Earthquaker Rainbow Machine. Basically, you can make your guitar sound like unicorn sprinkles and fairy dust. And that's useful, trust me. Just, if you ever see one of these, try it out. Because you gotta try stuff that's weird, and you gotta try stuff that you might not think you would like, because I like unicorn and fairy dust sprinkles. And last but not least, is the Miku Stomp. Is this essential? Yes, it's essential, because there are times when you're gonna wanna make your guitar sound like an anime character. That's proven by science. There's no point in showing you all these cool pedals if you don't go and create some music. With that said, I put together a pedal board and I'm gonna go make a song. Here I go. Today's record time is brought to you by The Beatles Revolver. I don't think there's a better example of a band in all of history who made amazing albums but didn't have a ton of equipment. Frankly, because a lot of the equipment we have nowadays wasn't even invented, but it never held them back, and this is a great example of that. This is one of my favorite Beatles records, and I think you should check it out. Tell me in the comments below about an album that you love that's minimal. It doesn't have a lot of flashy things. Maybe there's not a lot of flashy effects and tricks in it, but you love the songs. I wanna know about it and I want you to check this out. Thanks so much for watching and remember, don't overthink this stuff. You got to have fun because at the end of the day, that's reflected in the art that you make and the way that you play guitar. Another thing is one of the most important things you can do is go into a guitar store and get your hands on guitars, amps, and a bunch of pedals. Play them, experience them, and hear them with your own ear. That's really the only way you're gonna learn. These videos are great, but until you get your hands on stuff, it's just not the same. So I encourage you to do that, no matter how awkward you might feel. In the description below, I've placed some links to my favorite pedal boards, my favorite power supplies, and cables. Those are things I didn't mention earlier, but they're important when you're putting a board together, and I think you'll find that useful. If you like this episode, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon for notifications of future episodes. Until next time, have a wonderful day.